In this video, we'll dive into what makes a face universally attractive. You're walking down the street, minding your business, when BAM! Someone so attractive walks by that your brain short circuits. And here's the interesting part. If you showed their face to someone on the other side of the planet, they'd probably agree they're stunning. Why? How? Is there some secret code to facial beauty? Turns out, yes. And that's what we'll be looking at. They could be from a completely different country, speak a completely different language, and yet, they still look attractive to you. First off, we know beauty is not in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is not entirely subjective. Sure, some preferences are personal, but universal beauty is deeply rooted in evolution. Facial beauty is not shallow. It's biological. You guys have seen the studies showing that infants just a few months old stare longer at faces adults consider attractive across all ethnicities. That means we're born with some built-in beauty detectors. Even macaque monkeys stare longer at symmetrical faces. So, the monkeys know you're cooked. This isn't just a human thing. It's primal. Facial beauty became a biological signal. Evolution doesn't waste time on decoration. If something looks beautiful in nature, it usually means it has value. Facial symmetry is important, but that's just the start. Have you ever seen a perfectly symmetrical face? And it still looks off? Everyone talks about symmetry. I talk about it in my videos. A symmetrical face is beautiful. And yes, symmetry is important. It's one of the biggest predictors of attractiveness. It's a sign of strong genetics and an indicator your body developed without stress, malnutrition, or trauma. But symmetry is only the beginning. The brain doesn't just scan for symmetry. It looks for harmony, proportion, balance. A face can be symmetrical, but still unattractive if the chin is too weak, the mid-face is flat, or the features are poorly spaced. Beauty is a system, not a single feature. Think of it like music. Symmetry is like rhythm. But without melody and harmony, it's just noise. What really matters is harmonic proportions. The width of your eyes compared to your nose. The distance between your lips and your chin. The vertical thirds of the face. So, yes, symmetry helps. But proportion is king. Then there's the so-called golden ratio, 1.618, found in pyramids, found in galaxies, and supposedly found in the most beautiful faces. Studies show the golden ratio does sometimes align with attractive facial distances, especially between the eyes, nose, and lips. But the thing is, not every attractive face fits the ratio, and not every face that fits it looks attractive. It's not a beauty law, it's a tendency, a tool, I have a whole video on the golden ratio, so if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description. Next, averageness. I know this might sound counterintuitive. Why would an average face be attractive? Shouldn't unique features stand out? Well, average in this context doesn't mean a normie. It refers to a face that is composite, a statistical average of many faces within a population. Faces that are closer to the population average tend to lack extreme or unusual features. Extreme features can sometimes be associated with genetic mutations or developmental anomalies. An average face suggests genetic diversity, a robust gene pool, and an absence of any negative genetic markers. It's familiar, easy for our brains to process, and signals normalcy and good health within the species. So, if it's not about being perfect, what do universally attractive faces have in common? Across continents, across cultures, even across centuries, certain features just keep showing up. Strong cheekbones, a sign of strong genetics and hormonal health during puberty. Well-developed jaws, testosterone in men, healthy growth in women, wide-set, almond-shaped eyes, a signal of proper orbital growth, clear, hydrated skin, direct and immediate indicator of visible health, and facial balance, no one feature dominates. Evolution's playing matchmaker behind the scenes. And if you're unattractive, you're losing terribly. You're not even in the game. Then there's the masculine versus feminine beauty. Two evolutionary signals. Universally attractive men tend to have strong jawlines, prominent brow ridges, and deep-set eyes. These are testosterone-fueled traits. They signal dominance, strength, and the ability to protect. Women with neotenous features like fuller lips, softer jaws, a small nose, big round eyes tend to be perceived as highly attractive. 
These signal youthfulness, estrogen, and fertility. Youth is, of course, strongly linked to reproductive fitness. But here's the twist. Many faces that combine masculine and feminine traits are also wildly attractive. Because beauty isn't just about sex appeal. It's also about emotional expression, uniqueness, and the story your face tells. Here's also where it gets messy. Biology sets the base, but culture remixes it. In the 90s, heroin chic androgyny was in. Now, big butts and fillers rule. And get this, exotic features often score higher because diversity equals genetic strength. That's why mixed race faces also top most attractive lists. So if you're tired of being average, try being hot. You'll get the halo effect. Is it fair? Nope. But it explains why we're all low-key obsessed with this topic. So, is there a perfect face? Nah. Perfect is an illusion. Because once everyone fits the mold, we crave what breaks it. Unique features stand out. And honestly, the most magnetic faces make us feel something. You don't just think, wow, symmetrical. So, appreciate the science. Agree? Disagree? Fight me in the comments. And if your face is 1.6, 1.8 out of 10, smash like and subscribe. Try improving what you can and make peace with what you can't. This is the natural way. Thanks for watching.